Speaking of angst, yeah, uh, there's plenty of angst at the West Coast at the moment. Caro, let's have a look at this. Uh, this is the list of players unavailable, and there's a few others with some question marks during the week that look like they've got through. But that is a huge list of players from health protocols, uh, you know, COVID there, uh, and other injuries to the point where I think they've only got 22 to be able to pick from, I think, tonight. Well, look, it, look it's been a messy pre-season at West Coast. Um, from, again, the, you know, the, the AFL are frustrated that West Coast didn't really just respect how serious this COVID threat was over there and could become over there. Maybe um, didn't take it seriously enough. We know the Jack Darling issues. Clearly, he has now been jabbed, and I think he's been jabbed twice. And because um, he, he did not get a medical exemption, the AFL weren't going to allow that. I don't think that is allowed under the rules. Although no one mm. seems to what be able to Eagles talk about that. For the exemption? I think Jack Darling was. Yeah, but not the Eagles administration. Trevor is, but were they pushing for it? Oh, I think they would have liked a medical... A medical exemption was never going to happen. Yeah. It, it, it's, no one's been allowed a medical exemption. But it, that sort of highlighted to me, it was a portent of a lot of things going wrong at a footy club where the coach suddenly seems under a huge amount of pressure. Um, the football club, the handling of things like the pride jumper, the ensuing excuses, really disappointing. Um, some disappointments around AFLW from, from everyone, including the AFL. So I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to go happen with West Coast this year. I reckon they've missed their opportunity. It's amazing with everything they could have done over COVID, given that they could have played so many games at home, that it didn't happen. They couldn't make finals. Adam Simpson becomes so important. I think as leader of the football club, the positivity that he puts forward, they've got Gold Coast, North Melbourne, Fremantle and Collingwood. They've just got to somehow scrounge some wins over the first month. But here yep. was Adam Simpson yesterday speaking about Jack Darling. I'm sure we wouldn't like to talk about everyone here's medical status and uh, health and well-being, so I'm just not going to go there, out of respect. And that's with anyone, not just Jack. Well, when he describes it as a work-related injury, often when the players have injuries here, you talk about it. Yeah, we talk about any physical injury you, you'd like. So um, we talk about his foot, we talk about the injuries we've got at the moment. No, no worries, but there's a line. Yeah, and COVID has played a huge role in AFL football, as it has in the entire community. I want to put a graphic up and have a look at this. Uh, I don't think people really took into effect how, how hard it was in 2020 before we go into 2021. You have a look at the teams that missed. Richmond won the flag, missed the finals. West Coast missed finals. St Kilda missed finals. Collingwood missed finals. Western Bulldogs got through the grand final and then sort of hit the wall. But Port Adelaide and Brisbane, you don't really count them because they weren't as effective. But uh, Geelong, you know, they lost the preliminary final by 83 points. But it was a big effort to get to a preliminary final. We'll talk to Chris Scott about that a little bit later on. But I think that we have to take into effect also this year that these first round or the draft picks that will come in this year have played four games in two years, six games, maybe eight tops. So there's, still, there's a lot of question mark over the whole competition and the effect mentally, physically, spiritually that COVID has had in the last two years. Do you think well, it costs Nathan Buckley his coaching career? I'm sorry, Karen? Do you think it cost Nathan Buckley his coaching career? I think everyone was, was absolutely cooked. I know I was, uh, just at the finishing of my thing. And I think Bucks was, to be perfectly honest. And when, when the time came uh, you know, in April, where he and the Collingwood board sat down, I think they shook hands and said, yeah, we're just about done. And that was well, it. Well, it was uncharted waters, wasn't it, for yeah. everybody? It was very difficult mentally. Um, but four teams out of the eight. I think on average it's one, maybe maximum two we discussed off there. So it's double the amount of teams. Yeah. And then the teams that made the finals, because they went through so much, I think they gave a longer break and they come back unprepared. So it'd be interesting what the flow and effect and this the year And is. the Tigers have said during the week that maybe having the month off last year in September, as much as they would have loved to have played, might not be the worst thing to happen to them. 